the radiated feral cop, the big menace of Seven Days to Die. And it probably will stay being the biggest menace until the behemoth arrives. There's been quite a few suggestions from community of how to kill them. I've done some fair bit of extensive testing as well with different configurations, trying to come up with a way to kill them that doesn't require the player to put a rocket in their head or having turrets. Turrets generally work for pretty much any of the zombies that come at you, but they do take a fair bit of ammunition and you probably don't want to have them running the whole horde anyway. So let's do a recap of what we have here. Let's look at the radiated feral cop. With a massive 1500 hit points, it can take quite a pounding before it goes down. You can also see that it has the zombie radiator buff 80, which in practical terms means it heals 80 hit points every three seconds. And that's about 26 hit points per second. And of course, if we don't stop the explosion, blocks will take 70 to 50 damage with entities 250, and that can be very, very nasty. So that's what we're trying to kill. On the opposing side are our battery of trusted traps. We have our electric fence, which is a staple of any 70 to die base defense. It applies the shock buff. While it stuns and reduces movement about 90% for 3.2 seconds, it also deals 6 damage per second over 4.5 seconds that it's in duration. A good friend of the fence is the dart trap. It shoots steel darts. It has a fire rate of 2 per second where each steel dart does 22 to 45 damage. That means it's an average of 33.5 per each, which means 65 damage per second damage output. I'll be using four of these dart traps. Finally, for added damage, we're putting in blade traps. These deal a nice 20 damage each hit. And even though I couldn't find a configuration showing how often they hit, by doing a time analysis on a test video, it did indicate that they hit about 10 times per second. That's a massive 200 hit points a second of damage. It does seem to be somewhat affected by movement. It's almost as if the blades miss a mob if it's moving sometimes. So it doesn't always give 200 hit points a second damage. Now the trick is not just to kill the radiated cop, because I think we can do that, but it's to kill it before it explodes. So let's put all this to the test. So I spawned in a cop here, right in front of the traps. And let's see how they do. Well, it's on the pressure plates. It's taking damage from both the darts and the blades themselves. That's always good news. You do see a problem though. It's being bounced back and forth sometimes ahead of the trap, sometimes behind the trap, depending on whether it's running or whether the blades are pushing him. And that's a bit of a problem. Because it's off the trap, it doesn't take dart damage and it will explode. Let's try here with a different setup. The cop runs in. It is being pushed by the blade trap, which is good news. The downside is that the cop can actually attack the trap, so it does take damage, but here it did get stopped and did get killed. However, it doesn't always work. You'll see here that the cop is not on the pressure plates, which means it's not getting hit by the dart traps consistently, and it explodes. It's a bit of a problem when it moves back and forth. Here I've tried to put a block behind it, so at least it won't be being pushed back. Which causes another problem. It actually runs through it and, well, that's not a very good thing to have. Fortunately, I have a door here, but you might not always have that. What I've done instead is putting hatches in front. There's a block in the back, there's a hatch in the front. And that keeps it nicely on the pressure plate, getting hit by the blades, getting hit by the electrical fence, and being hit by the darts. And that kills it. And I'm just doing the same thing a few times, as you can see, it consistently kills the cop. It even seems to work pretty well with two cops. You know, it takes one out, the darts are still firing, and there is taking out the second one as well. So it seems to work quite consistently, it'll always take them out. 
And here is my final setup. You'll notice that I've added a top lock. And that's because in some of the testing, at very rare occasions, a cop would actually run across and jump over the hatch. That present, presents a bit of a problem. So I've added this one to help stop him behind. There are still some problems. You might have noticed in the, in the testing videos that, and maybe from your own testing, that if a mob dies on top of the pressure plates, sometimes the pressure plates get stuck. It'll keep on triggering the dart traps and whatever you have to keep attacking. This means you're going to run out of darts eventually and waste resources. Hopefully this is something that they'll fix in a future update. A second variant is actually to have a ceiling place blade trap. This works pretty well. It covers a little bit more ground, but it has a major problem with being susceptible to punch damage. And because the cops do 500 damage per punch, it can take a lot of beating. In general, it works, but you, know, you have to be careful so it doesn't get wrecked because they'll just stream past it. My preferred setup is probably with the blade traps in the walls themselves. That keeps them out of the way for the zombies so they won't be punching them, so they won't get wrecked as easily. But let's see how it works against a bunch of the zombies. So let me spawn in a few of them here. Let's do a couple of cops and just some random ones to see how that works. As you can see, it's working pretty well. It takes care of the cops, it takes care of the, the normal zombies as well. Obviously, this setup is not necessary for walls. Having cops blow out outside your steel walls or concrete walls isn't such a big deal. But in corridors, entryways, this seems to work quite well. I hope you've enjoyed, and do hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on more videos.